so that was um, a song about uh, our daughter. She's adopted, and uh, uh, it was crazy when we adopted her. So um, anyway, this is Shoulder to Shoulder, and it's about going through some, um, can you swear on this station? It's about going through some shit with someone that you love, and and uh, and going through it together. modern times.
And my bones are bruised Bright lights and plunder The deeper waterfall of wonder I still think about it I still think about you All right, so um, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for filming us and recording us and doing all this work. A little shout to the camera crew behind the scenes and the audio guys, all the buds. Um, so we grew up in this Cor this town, Corvallis. Well, some of us did. Uh, yeah, we, f we, like, we used to go on walks on campus, and it was weird driving here because it was like this little tender moment, and uh, we're a tender band. Um, and, uh, but anyway, I want to tell you a story. It's story time. So this record's called Deer Keeps Pace. And we were reluctant to call this record Deer Keeps Pace because our name is Tense. We don't have any acoustic guitars in our band. And like Tense, Deer Keeps Pace just sounds like a, like a country band or a folk band. And, um, and that's maybe a little silly, but we were considering some other names. And we were on tour in December and we were at a rest stop in California. And we were talking about it and debating it. And we had a couple things on the table and then this deer appeared um, in the brush. And we're like, wow, that's weird. And then we thought, maybe that's a symbol. I don't know. It's still kind of weird to call your... I don't know if we're... But then we, we stopped talking about it, and we were on the highway, and 20 minutes later, we were driving down the highway, and, and there was a deer, like a buck, a giant buck, like appeared on the highway next to us and like looked at, looked at our car. And uh, it's, this is even weirder. It gets weirder because the song Deer Keeps Pace, which is the title track in which we're about to play, is about this like cosmic experience of, of like you're you're in like a station wagon, your parents' station wagon, and you're like on the highway, and there's like a deer running along with your parents' car, and you're like looking out the window having a conversation with the deer. So this is like uh, literally we had the experience in real life. So we were like, well, we have to name our record Deer Keeps Pace. So this is that uh, waking dream experience. I 
see the playfulness in you Do you keep space? a clap track for ourselves for after ourselves. Good job, man. There you go. Thanks. We just played our album release show last night at the Doug Fir in Portland, and it was like such a fun night. So we're all kind of spinning off of that. And uh, our album, I guess, oh, this is fast forward. We have a new album. It's called Deer Keeps Pace. It's on the internet. It's, it's SEO friendly because it's a weird cosmic dream. So you have to type in as Deer Keeps Pace and you'll find us. Um, this is uh, Sensations. It's about sex. <laughs> kind of.
someday we're gonna have a um, a, st uh, 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 a guitar tech for Chris. But until then, we get to make him make fun of him while he tunes his guitar between songs. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> this is called Backyards. So, uh, um, about uh, two years ago, a little less, I, uh, I quit smoking cigarettes, and then like a year later I got cancer, and then I, got, and I lost a testicle, and then I survived cancer, and then, uh, don't worry, I'm still here, and then uh, I wrote this song about it, and it's about, uh, my wife tells me I should be more personal about these songs, so I'm doing it. Uh, this one's about playing video games to cope with uh, the severity of your situation. I'm really glad I quit smoking before I got cancer, because if I'd been like smoking uh, and then found out I had cancer, it would have been really bad. Started smoking right here on this campus. Weird. I'm not like a tobacco anti. <laughs> yeah. I still love the smell. This is called Dopamine Crush, and it is about playing video games. 
I had I had Chris so mesmerized that <laughs> he didn't get ready. And thanks for bearing with uh, the, the allergies.
exposed I'm afraid But I was born To be powerful and powerless and glow Should I clap or should I snap? Uh, <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'm here with Tense here in studio for the KBVR sessions today. Um, and as of this recording, y'all are um, releasing your new album, Deer Keeps Pace. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. That performance was amazing. Um, I'm here with Brian, Amy, Chris, and Josh of the band. So thank you so much. Um, one of the, the themes that, um, Brian, that you mentioned earlier in the set is, is family. Um, two of you, the two of you are married, correct? Um, and Chris, you're a, you're a hull as well, as far as I know, but you're not related? That's correct. Okay, <laughs> good to know. Um, can you speak more to uh, sort of the, the familial themes in the album and in the band itself? Uh, ye yes, I can. Um, I'm just going to improvise on this. Let's see. I mean, it's really... Um, it's really just, uh, I think, uh, I, I mean, it's just really like a fatherhood has made me not as uh, sad and confused. It's like, I feel like I was for like a decade uh, just frustrated with the world and cynical. And then I had, to, this is my story, I had kids and I was like, oh man, I don't have to feel this way all the time. And like looking at them just made me feel young and happy. And then I think as an artist, that's like really good stuff you can give to the world. So I kind of tried to make a point of of, of chasing that stuff as, as a songwriter. Um, and the fact that we share the band, there's all these, and we have had a really intense, we've had an intense, like three or four years. So intense, I just did it. <laughs> um, uh, so so there's a lot of like material to draw from, if you will. So um, yeah, so it's been, uh, it's just been natural, but it feels like, it feels like, um, it's drawing really good things out of us creatively to to kind of explore it and yeah it's just a lot of fun. Awesome. Um, the you wrote a song about your daughter Lily, uh, which you played today um, for the performance. Can you speak more to how I guess both fatherhood and motherhood um, and just being a parent, like how that affected your your songwriting style um, both before and after? Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, th so that song is so our kids are adopted so a lot of the tension you hear in that song is related to the process of adoption um which is wonderful but challenging and then the the kind of sweeter moments are about the the like our daughter <laughs> i guess mm -hmm. so so there's that um and i don't know of uh, how did how has parenthood changed songwriting uh for one thing like this band, unlike any band I've been in, we just literally set up in the studio and start jamming. 
and we have the luxury of being able to record a lot of our ideas because we're in a studio. And so we just um, improvise, and that's how like basically every song we write starts that way. Um, so that's not necessarily directly related to Parenthood, but it did happen in tandem with Parenthood, and it's a ton of fun. So I don't have to carry as much, like, I don't have to sit by myself down at a piano and spend hours, like, isolated writing songs, which I like to do, but I get lonely because I'm a real extrovert. I'm I, think extrovert. I, could, I think I could add a little bit <laughs> yeah. to that, too. Yes, please me. do. Bring it um, on. Uh, whenever we come over for, for, for practice or for whether we're running through our set or... Uh, writing new music, you, you walk in the front door and Jaden or Bree are running around in, you know, half naked, throwing food like across the room or trying to, you know, climb us for hugs as Josh and I walk in. And that is like, that's like how you're greeted. So, you know, going then through the house out into the, into the studio, you're just like, you can't help but... Um, be free and have joy. And then that kind of translates into what we immediately express when we're, when we're playing. So. Fantastic. Um, the band has a song on, on this new album called Light, Light, Wait. Um, and doing a little bit of research, there's a story about a nude beach, apparently. Do you think you could uh, uh, elaborate on that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's my uh, doing. <laughs> um, uh, last year, um, my wife, myself, two friends, we were um, we're in uh, we're visiting this small island called Menorca, which is just off the coast of Barcelona, and uh, we didn't quite know what to expect. You know, we just went uh, and went to a beach, and uh, we get there, and everyone's naked, and it was uh, this this uh, like in a in a way that we felt naked for wearing clothes. And uh, anyway, there's a whole, whole long story to that. But we, long story short, after a week there, we went from this mindset that we have here of shame, essentially, and being uh, afraid of our body image, of our naked self, that um, by the end of it, we had embraced this new cultural phenomenon. And it it had not only just, just physically, like just this uh, appearance or this idea, but it... Um, yeah, it really changed us like inside of how we view ourselves. And that's kind of that I shared this story and with, with the band and how it just it completely changed um, my wife and myself. Um, uh, we saw uh, this family as we're leaving, this mom, this dad, and two kids. And they were, pl they were in like the shallow end and just playing and naked. And it was like really weird, you know, because you're looking like someone's going to get arrested here if we're in America. <laughs> and... But they were just playing uh, and just joyful and throwing each other around and chasing one another. And anyway, that 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 image, that um, yeah, that that little movie that played in plays in my head. I shared and and Brian took it and you know, it was the idea of just accepting oneself for who we are. I suppose. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. That song's also kind of a band anthem because it's like what it's about is what we it's like what we want to do on stage. Mm -hmm. Be like super vulnerable. To where everyone's uncomfortable, but then they get on by after a week at the nude beach. Beach, then they feel safe. That's like kind of the goal. So a little disarmed or something. Run out the run out the uh, the chorus lyric, since you. Yeah, I am here. My weakness I now willingly expose. I'm afraid, but I was born to be powerful and powerless and glow. Sounds kind of cheesy when you say it alone, but. No, I love Feels it. Feels good. Well, thank you for be, uh, for willing to be vulnerable because I love I love your sound and your your songwriting and um, just how you guys uh, perform together. Um, so a lot of the album and a lot of the tracks are are very thematic. Um, in between each of the the songs, you you go into more deeper themes. One of which um, goes into addiction and dealing uh, and coping with uh, playing video games. So, what video games did you play <laughs> <laughs> when you were? So there was about a year FIFA? and a half. FIFA. I played a lot of video games during that. I'm like, I know this is weird, but like, uh, I don't have time to like get really good at like beating 14 year olds at Halo, <laughs> like or college kids or whatever. Like, I just don't have time. So I stopped after the first four months playing like online with other people. But I'm like a FIFA freak, and then I'm really into soccer. And then, um, and then uh, I played the most embarrassing one. 
is a game that no adult should ever play called Witcher 3. Oh. I love Witcher 3. It's, it's so, so much good. It's, it's so, so much good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have hundreds of hours. Oh I don't my know God, about hundreds you. and hundreds. Yeah, that game is so addicting. <laughs> so I put some hours in on that. That was probably the, the one because everything pales. If you beat that game, everything else pales in comparison for hours invested. It's a weird game. It must be like, yeah. For, in my she, perspective, she like that. just like not knowing anything about it. She's just like, open world, you got to get into it. <laughs> so, um, Brian, I found out <laughs> earlier during this set that you were actually a Corvallis native. You, you're, you grew up in Corvallis, correct? Yes, yes, I did. And yeah. is that how you met Amy through Corvallis? Yeah. We were, well, we were going to college together and we had like mutual friends. And um, I think we saw each other. It was like in, in the hallways or something. Yep. And then, did you just come up and we, we introduce my, he introduced himself or something, and then we became fast friends over music. Like, I would tell him about a band, or he'd tell me about a band, and then we would go drive to Portland and kind of chat, and it's kind of how we got to know each other. Mm -hmm. that, those long drives, <laughs> seeing our favorite bands. Yeah. Like shifting fun. our hips next to each other at all ages venues in Portland. Or Awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> what were your favorite bands? What do you think the one band, uh, what was the one band that brought you together? I, it might be a little embarrassing. Uh, I'm going to say Mates of State. I feel like that That's was the one I that we had say. common. Yeah. Mates of State at the Meow Meow, yeah. which is no longer there anymore. It's pretty close to the Doug Fur oh, now, okay. though. But, but it, it was, was like, such an awesome venue. It was like the yeah. safe haven for underage kids. We would all go there. And like a lot of your, like you almost never, I don't know what it's like now for underage kids up in Portland, but like almost none of our favorite bands played bars mm -hmm. so at, it was like at that time one out of ten times you were like oh so bummed out yeah because you couldn't i sent hate mail to a couple booking agents <laughs> i did that was like very childish of me i you know i'd have to agree with you you know being involved with the music scene here in corvallis um i go to a lot i go to bomb shows too and or bar shows rather um but i really really enjoy the the sense of community when mm -hmm. it comes to un all ages shows mm -hmm. Um, because I remember when I was a freshman in college, I wanted to see Tango Alpha Tango at a bar in town, and I remember walking up and like, I'm gonna go see him, and I couldn't go in because it was a 21 and over, and I was 18 at the time. So um, that's great that I can do it now and I can enjoy that. But I'm really glad that you um, and the rest of the band like um, take pride in all ages yep. music. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so the two of you met in Corvallis, and you actually have a KBVR connection as well, you mentioned. So you have a buddy that's a DJ? Yeah, so... Um, or it was. I had or a was. friend who was a DJ <laughs> in, like, in like 02. 02, it's crazy. And he, he had a radio show, and he, you weren't supposed to have guests like that were students, right? But I just did, we did it anyway. I did too. <laughs> and we just would go in and... Off the record? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. It was like, those were such good memories. Yeah. And how did uh, the two of you end up meeting uh, Chris and Josh for the band? Um, Josh and I worked in the same building, and I had a little studio, and he's a drummer, so he would walk by my studio, and he would hear, see the drums, and he'd be coming and be like, oh, these are nice, that's a nice kit. And then we just talked, and it was that, like, organic. Yeah, it was. And then we needed, a, we needed a bass player, and Josh was like, I have a buddy named Chris. Which I'm not a bass player. <laughs> yeah, and well, he plays guitar, but... Yeah, and then it, it just kind of, and then kind of one day we were like, maybe, like, I really wanted to play, that is a long story. We put him on guitar, and then he started writing hooks, and we were like, oh, man, he's got to write hooks in this band. And so now he plays guitar. Awesome. And what's that process like as far as songwriting? Is it a lot more, is it collaborative uh, in the process? I think, like, the de facto is a very obvious, like, everyone does their role, like, so since I play the keyboards, I'll work out the chord changes. And since I'm the singer and the songwriter, I'll write the melodies. But then he'll like, like when we're jamming, I'll just be like, I, I, I like mumble, like gibberish, just to get like vowels and consonants out. And then I write melodies like kind of spontaneously. And then he just like listens and plays off of me. Or I listen to him and play off of him. And then Josh plays a beat. Josh records beats on his his voice mo memos. Yeah, like I, it, it, it's very collaborative. Like it, it, it will start with just an idea, like a beat, mm -hmm. and um, and if it feels right, then usually Chris is next. He and he'll just like start riffing on something, and then Brian will jump in. And what we started with is nothing like what what we end with. The actual song, like all the ingredients get put together, and like the the finished cooked product is. I can't believe that's where it came from, but yeah, it's very collaborative. We have this thing called flow state. So it's this idea of getting lost. 
and then we lose ourselves and just start playing and it's uh, very spiritual and euphoric and we just like it really lose ourselves like I don't know what we're doing and then somewhere out of that we find our way and we're like oh we that's a that's a song and then there it is so that's pretty much how this record came together fantastic all right. Um, so again, um, Tense in studio, thanks so much for coming in. You have your new album, Deer Keeps Pace, uh, which comes out today as of this recording. Um, what's up next for you guys in regards to uh, pushing the album? Uh, lunch. Lunch. <laughs> 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 well, uh, we're playing Spokane tomorrow night, and then we're coming back to Corvallis. We're playing Bombs Away the 25th. Awesome. And then we're playing Salem the 26th. And I, I mean, we're just... We've got, we're, we're kind of watching the publicity train, seeing how much press we can get. And um, we're kind of at a crossroads where we have to figure out how much touring we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and like literally we drop our kids off at, at grandma and grandpa's. We have like four or five days to go play shows and then we have to go pick them up. So, and we can do one-offs, but we can't really like see the country. Or, so we'll, we'll see, we'll have to, we have some questions to answer in that regard how great a cost we all want to pay <laughs> to get our songs out there. But we're just going to, I mean, I think our hope is to um, just soak this up. Like it's really rewarding to put music out into the world and see people interact with it and try to be present and enjoy it and then get back to writing. Yeah. Put another record out hopefully next year. Well, you have experience with promotion, right? Cause you used to write songs for ads. If I did my research correctly. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I still kind of do, but I'm sort of um, trying to um, do as little do as little as I can for a short time to see to focus on making art. Um, but yes, and it's totally different. Like the kind the niche that I was in was about relationships and like making friends with people, and not about like social media. And like when you're in a band and you like pay a publicist a bunch of money to get you heard, like you just have to wait and see what happens. And it's this weird like behind this curtain you're like wow this is weird it's a, and you feel kind of powerless and it's very different um um than what i did but i'm sure that it probably translates in intangible ways life experience awesome yeah so um when you guys first started out how does it feel from when you first formed as a band as opposed to now with the release of this new album how does it feel to put your work out there and and you know you mentioned that flow state how uh, how does it feel to sort of release that you know flow state release those songs out into the world for others to hear feels feels great <laughs> uh yeah um we were talking about it just on our drive over here that it's this idea of of landing the plane you know i've been up in the air and not knowing where essentially where this where the, everything's going to go um and it's this the sense of arrival where like last summer uh we we signed uh, a record deal and then that was like okay w the plane's taking off again what what's happening yeah so to ha get the get the record out now it's just yeah it feels great fantastic yeah. and bad man um recording <laughs> company Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for coming into the studio and performing today. I can't wait to put it online and um, push this record. One of our own DJs is re uh, reviewing it right now. We got it in the mail just a couple days ago. Um, and I love the tracks that I've heard online and in, uh, in studio today. So thank you so much for coming. I can't wait to see you all again on May 25th at Bombs. So thank you so much. Thanks, thank Donald. you. Thank you, Donald. Cheers, Thank man. you. Ha 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 ha!